Hey everybody and welcome to a uh, quick demo on a health check page talking about uh, an LTM or uh, whether it be an F5 or other device that's a uh, monitoring your network, uh, commonly a load balancer or uh, any other kind of device that's uh, monitoring for the back end. So we'll take a quick talk about it and then we'll go ahead and implement one. So what we've got here is we've got my website and uh, I've got a single page here set up just as a health check page. Now this page is not residing in the web server. It actually resides on a back-end database. So by pulling this page and looking for specific content out of it, not only am I verifying that the website is up and running, but I'm actually verifying that the database is functioning also. This can be used actually even for a more advanced health check page where you would actually have a PHP or um, uh, .NET page that actually writes a value to the database and then after it writes that value it reads that value from the database and then displays that on the page and you verify that that exists there. That way you've actually verified that your writing and your reading is working properly along with your web server or any other web services that you want and you can make these health checks incredibly incredibly advanced. Um, but uh, we're going to start with a real nice and simple one. This is just a WordPress blog. I've created a health check page that says health F5 health check page um, and these are health monitors technically they're not actually called health checks on the F5 but everyone calls them health check pages so that's what we'll use here so anyhow so we've got our content here that we're gonna be looking for it's just uh, F5 health check page and uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is uh, hop over to our F5 here and we're on our we're already in our, our health monitors pages, but what we'll do is we'll hop over and uh, take a look at uh, our pools. So these are the pools, and you can see that they're blue because they currently do not have health checks enabled on them. They are just up. So we're going to go ahead and create a, uh, 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 it's still a basic health check, but it's, it's much more advanced than the built-in ones. Built-in, a lot of people use like TCP or ping, um, they'll use a, uh, a, a the TCP three-way where it's just sending SYN, SYNAC, ACK, and it marks it up. Um, those don't verify really much beyond that the service is listening on the port. If you are throwing 400 errors or 500 errors or uh, you know any other number of er issues that's going on, you're just not going to see it. You're going to have no idea that this is going on. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to hop in and we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to create a new pool. Or I'm sorry, not a new pool, a new health check, new monitor. So we're going to go ahead and give it a name and in order to save you the uh, suffering of me typing, I actually already have all this stuff uh, ready to go. I'm just going to paste that in. And I always like to, to identify not only the site that I'm hitting but also the protocol that I'm hitting. Sometimes they'll actually and I apologize I'm actually creating a new pool here let me hop into monitors <laughs> and create a new monitor here we go so we're gonna select a HTTPS monitor because it's gonna be a secure site and again back to where we were so we've got blog.securenetworks.com which is of course my blog site and uh, I always like to not only put the site down but that it's HTTPS because I'm also gonna create another monitor for the HTTP site um, it, Obviously, description. Go ahead, put in if you want. I use, I, I make mine clear enough that just from the name, I can tell what's going on. The intervals. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So the the type is going to be HTTPS. Obviously, for this one, the parent monitor is HTTPS. So we're going to keep it a basic configuration. Our interval. So it's going to check by default. It'll check every 30 seconds, and it'll time out after not getting a response for 45 seconds. Um, that is absolutely fine um, so you're gonna want to tune this based on your web server and your expected response times if you're running a laggy slow web server you really don't want it being pulled out when it's just a little bit slow for a minute because of the load I mean you do want it pulled out if it's having problems but you don't want it pulled out for no reason whatsoever because now you're gonna put all your load on the other web server and it's now not gonna handle it and you really should obviously for redundancy have enough so that one web server alone is enough to handle the load or at least a fit one failure you, you want n plus one 
So you really don't want a scenario where if one web server goes down, your site goes down, because what's the point in having a load balancer? But uh, let's go ahead and go to our send string. So this is the string that is going to be sent uh, in order to pull uh, the query. So again, to save you uh, the uh, pain of me typing. So this is just a basic get request. We're looking at the index.php page and page ID of 84. And we'll hop right over here and you'll see it's page ID of 84. Now, the index.php is the default page. It's not displayed here, but it is actually hitting the index page. So we're, this is going to be really simple. We're doing an HTTP 1.0 which means I do not need to include the host information. The advantage of this is that if you have a numerous websites on the back end and they're not all the same, if you do an HTTP 1.0 and you don't specify the host file, or the, I'm sorry, the, the host header, so that your web servers, each website has its own unique IP or its own unique port. If you're doing host headers where you've got multiple websites listening on one port, this will not work for you. But I like this method personally because I give all my web servers their own unique IP addresses and their own unique ports. So I don't have any host headers being used by the web server to determine which site you're going to. The advantage here is I can reuse this site. I could actually call this a generic just check. So in fact, you know what? We're going to go ahead and do... No, we're, I apologize. We're not going to do that. There, it doesn't make any sense because uh, it is going to be unique with this uh, page ID equals 84. But if it was not, if this was just an index.php page or a slash health check index.php, and um, I could reuse the same health check for all of my sites instead of needing to create a custom one for each site. Potentially could save you a lot of work. But in this case, we don't have the... I'm not using the host header, but I don't have the luxury of creating one for all of my sites at the moment. So we've, uh, we've got our send string all set up there. And uh, so basically, it's just going to do a, a get request on uh, page ID equals 84, um, and then basically close the connection and get the response back. So our health check content the, the, that we're looking for within that page, the receive string here, we are just looking for F5 health check page, which of course is right here. Okay, now here's an interesting note to, to keep in mind, especially if you're working on the F5. So if the receive string is not there, it doesn't have this health check, F5 health check page when it does the query, it will actually immediately take this out of the pool and any existing clients that are connecting up will be forced to go to the other web server. Now, this is something to keep in note. In my site, this makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. Uh, you can bounce around from one web server to another. There's no session affinity needed. You don't have to stick to the same web server. But if, you, if you're running an app that is using session variables, and these session variables are not written to a back-end database with a, with a key, that when the person visits the other web server, it will essentially force them to re-authenticate. So in a really well-designed app, you have all of the user session variables also written to a database with a key. You, and that key is written in a cookie. So when the user then gets kicked over to another web server, that key is grabbed out of the cookie, those session variables are pulled out of the database, and they're insert, inserted into the client's browser session. So there's no impact to the user when they bounce from web server to web server. Poor written sites or sites that haven't taken this into account, when the user moves from one server to a different server without session affinity, the user will have to usually re-log in because those session variables for the fact that the user is logged in are no longer available and it's going to force them to re-authenticate. So we're going to come down here. Um, and, and in this situation, if you have a disable string, so let's say you wanted to take a server down for maintenance, you were going to patch it, and you wanted to take down that web server, you could actually modify this page to say, oh, I don't know, look for the disable string of disable. 
and then the web server what it will do is it will not i'm sorry the the load balancer will no longer send new connections to this web server but it will allow all existing sessions already connected up to age out and and go through their normal uh closing session it, what it does is it allows the user to complete whatever the transactions are that they are doing they finish and they have a good user experience before they move on to the next next web server or next website whatever happens to be um and it, it forces or it prevents that abrupt moving to the new web server when when the session variables are still there but anyhow again in this situation it's wordpress i have no session variables there's nothing to worry about and uh we're going to leave the default ciphers here uh, i am going to be removing this data that gets populated by default we do not have to worry about in a reverse or transparent. Um, the alias is again, it's just the, the ports that it's hitting, the IPs that it's hitting for the actual web service for the keep alive. And we're gonna go ahead and, uh, in fact, we're gonna see if we can repeat this. And we can, nice. Save us a little bit of work here. So we're gonna go to HTTP monitor. And of course it deleted everything out. That's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get our get our name again. And here we go. It's our the, this is just gonna be our HTTP check instead of the secure site. This is the insecure site. And by the way, you actually can't visit my site on the insecure site. You automatically get transitioned over and, and redirected to the HTTPS version, which I encourage everyone out there to be using just for security. Make sure that uh, there's no man in the middle. Even if you don't have big privacy, your customers might care about it. So try to get that HTTPS going. There's no reason not to. The certs are actually even free these days, and I'm sure I will end up doing a video on the free SSL certs that are out there and how good they are. It's absolutely incredible stuff. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get that same query string in there for our send string. Just our basic get request, nothing special. And we're going to go ahead and get our, our text also. And for our receive string, there we go. And once again, we're just going to delete out all this uh, additional data here. And we're going to go ahead and click finish. So now we've got our two, our blog.securenetworks.com for the HTTP and HTTPS. They're all set up here. So to apply these and just validate them, we're just going to hop over to our pools and our pool list. And we're going to go to our 443 blog, and here's our 443 HTTPS. We're going to go ahead and apply that health monitor, and go ahead and update it. Oh, and you can see that the health check has already been successful. And now we're going to hop down to our pool again, and we're going to do our port 80 pool. And we're going to select our port 80, go ahead and apply it, and update. And there you go, it's already green. So what we've gone is we've gone from a health check where those web servers could have been down with no web server running in any way, shape, or form. The service could have been rebooted and it would have still been sending traffic to those IPs. Now, not only do we have a health check, we're not only making sure that the server is alive, we're making sure that the web server is actually running, the web server is accepting connections, the web server is actually going connecting to a database, pulling information out of that database and then displaying that information and formatted properly to the end user. So you've got a very nice end-to-end -end connectivity, making sure that the website is up and running. So I'm hoping this helps you out. Hoping I didn't go too fast. Uh, it's a very basic thing. Uh, everyone should be doing this. And this is uh, an older version of the F5. I'll end up doing this with, uh, if there are any changes, I've got the uh, new 16 on the way. So um, I'll, uh, I'll have some updates here in a couple of days. But uh, thank you very much for listening, and I uh, hope you liked it.